Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us pray together the collect of purity. O God, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death to morning, open our lips to sing your praise and our hearts to receive your word, that we may come before you in truth and sincerity of heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God knows no partiality, but in every nation, 
anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and also and who, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Be God. Let us read responsively the appointed psalm by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And my there is a sound of exaltation and victory. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live. And declare the words of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. Open for me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. The same stone which the builders rejected. This is the Lord's doing. On this day, the Lord has acted. The second reading is a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. There's been a misprint, a little wrong reference in our bulletin. Love should be shown without pretending. Hate evil and hold on to what is good. Love each other like the members of your family. Be the best at showing honor to each other. Don't hesitate to be enthusiastic. Be on fire in the spirit as you serve the Lord. Be happy in your hope Stand your ground when you're in trouble and devote yourselves to prayer. Contribute to the needs of God's people and welcome strangers into your home. Bless people who harass you. Bless and don't curse them. Be happy with those who are happy and cry 
with those who are crying. Consider everyone as equal and don't think that you are better than anyone else. Instead, associate with people who have no status. Don't think that you're so smart. Don't pay back anyone for their evil with evil actions. But show respect for what everyone else believes is good. If possible, to the best of your ability, live at peace with all people. Don't try to get revenge for yourselves, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. It is written, revenge belongs to me. I will pay it back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. By doing this, you will pile burning coals of fire upon his head. Don't be defeated by evil but defeat evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place delayed him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It was January of 2010. After many years, I arrived in my hometown of Mokokchung, located in the far northeastern corner of India, perched on one of the mountains of the Himalayan range. I had forgotten how dreadfully cold winters can be in the uninsulated homes of this small provincial town. So the first night, I rolled up like a Brazilian armadillo inside the heavy cotton quilt and finally drifted off to sleep. Sometime around midnight, I was woken up by the disturbing sound of a grown man crying unabashedly, more like howling coming from one of the neighboring homes. In my disoriented self, I tried to dismiss the pain of a broken man as nothing more than a drunken episode. But very soon, a rhythmic thudding sound of hammer on wood began to echo in the lull of the night. And from the deep recesses of my memory, I remembered. I remembered having heard such a sound before. I realized someone had died. Now it's the norm there for families and friends to wash, dress, and prepare the dead for burial. And often the coffin too gets cobbled together at home. I was told in the morning that a neighbor's only son, barely 10 years old, had died from a fever that came out of nowhere. This is life. God gives and God takes, they told me. My cultivated sensibilities now unable to fathom the terrible unfairness of it all. The lack of resources needed to save a life from a mundane fever. The hopes and promises of life for a whole family now nailed shut. What good can come out of this God-forsaken town? Who will roll away the heaviness of life for us? This is the daily chant of millions through the years as they carefully select the right kind of spices to mask the unbearable decay of all they had imag imagined life to be. Gaza, Ukraine, Haiti, Myanmar, Yemen, Yemen just to name a few of the armed conflict zones in our world today, where decay is more than the dead being lowered into the ground, where hope appear and disappear like shadow puppets. Very early on the first day of the week, before the sun surrendered its soft orange glow to become the blinding light of a new day. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, prepared the best spice mix whose aroma they hope will overwhelm the fumes from the rapidly disintegrating hopes once embodied in the person of Jesus, their friend and anticipated Messiah. These women, well acquainted with loss and disappointments in life, 
seen and treated as less than men from birth, on trial, like Jesus, it seems, every single day of their lives. They know, they know what it's like to tiptoe around life, skirting death of various kinds, and to still, still be fully prepared to linger and nurse the grief that would invariably swell up like waves at high tide. They know of the necessity for closures to carry on with life. They have done it a thousand times. So once again, they prepare to start another painful process of closure with Jesus' death. But it's not to be. Life is stranger than fiction, as they say. And for the women, as it is for most, a new form of life is quite unfathomable. The two Marys and Salome are, of course, alarmed at the sight of the open tomb occupied by a man very much alive. There is no corpse for them to honor and pay respects to. Do not be alarmed, the young men say to the women. Don't be alarmed. Are you kidding? We are terrified. Another Easter is upon us. And I for sure am terrified that I have not yet grasped what the young man is saying even as I try to capture the new life in joyful alleluias, colorful blooms, and a sanctuary full of God's children. I have become adept at closures, weary of fake news for sure, and so it's much too daunting to take in what is being said here. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. The gloom and shadows of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday are far easier to navigate. The hues predictable and so much more the familiar story of humanity, of mine and maybe even yours. So even as I confront the empty tomb, I find myself looking, looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was betrayed, abandoned, condemned, certainly tortured, nailed to a tangible wooden cross, who died and was buried. It is a true human story. But I'm told, we are told, as always, he is not here, that death isn't the end of it. And I am perplexed. The empty tomb is still much more difficult to confront than the cross of Good Friday, and I find myself frustrated again at my lack of imagination of the new life. I find myself looking for the spectacular, for a forceful holy wind to sweep me off my feet and land me in utopia. I realize that the implications of Jesus' resurrection are exceedingly more than I can ever hope to see or understand. And that, that is a good thing. It's a very good thing that it's not up to me, it's not up to us, but up to God to bring about a new life in whatever way God deems good. Because... 
Because, my friends, if you look around, we will find that our imaginations of new life have invariably involved the exclusion or even destruction of those who don't agree with us. The women realize something out of the ordinary has happened, that life has changed. Yet, they are told nothing more than that Jesus has been raised, that he no longer is in the tomb, that he has gone ahead of them, that they will see him as he promised. Mind you, not in heaven, not even in Jerusalem, but in Galilee. No fanfare of earthquakes, of multiple angels, no resurrected Jesus in the unrecognizable heavenly attire in Mark's story. The stunning news of God's recreation is told in the mundane vocabulary of movement, of sending, of engaging in conversation, of meeting one another. Could it be? that this is exactly where we are meant to find the hope of seeing and meeting the risen Jesus. In the ordinary, taken for granted act of living our lives, of our comings and goings, of being sent to one another, in our meetings and in our conversations about tombs no longer being tombs, of the times when we went to embalm the dead and found God had gotten there first. It's called bearing witness to God's resurrection stories in our lives at the time of our showing up in the lives, in the situations, and in the places where death dominates the narrative. God is life, and God has always been about life. And that life from God has always been about abundance, not as in material prosperity, but abundance as in filled with the goodness of God. Abundance as in life is not just possible, but thrives beyond our assumptions and presumptions. If we are to believe that Easter is the birth of God's new creation initiated in Jesus' res resurrection, it would be good to reach back into the first creation story about God and us, where God says, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. You see, God's self-revelation is in the plural, a community. The gracious gift of life manifest in God's creation and recreation is one of community, of likeness to each other, of relatedness, of engagement with one another, not differentiation and separation. The resurrection is described by the man in the empty tomb as the crucified, having been raised and on the move, out and away from the tomb where all human stories end. The man leaves it for us to grasp God's story, which unlike ours, will not be one of vengeance, will not propagate betrayal, hate, condemnation, violence, and execution. God will instead bring about new life. So go tell the disciples of the one who loved, who forgave, who healed, who welcomed and embraced the despised and the forgotten, that he is going ahead of you back to Galilee where it all began as he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, meaning turn from pursuing the world and turn to God. 
and believe in the good news. Follow me. This is what it means to be community. Not just any community, but to be God-like community, bearing witness to each other about the kingdom of God, which is really about the goodness of God, about God's movement toward us even after we have betrayed, condemned, and crucified God's only Son. And it is about our movement toward each other as bearers of God's good news. There you will see him, is I believe about the embodiment of God's goodness and love in the risen Jesus. Now the brilliance of Mark's resurrection story lies in the open-ended narrative. To see and meet the risen Jesus is left to us. Mark started his story of Jesus by saying the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Today, we come to the end of the story, or should I say, we come to the beginning of our story, as the man in the empty tomb implies. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the risen Son of God, told and embodied in his disciples. In a world beseeched by violence, hatred, territorial and ideological wars, poverty and predatory economic systems, the simple act of showing up at death's door like the two Marys and Salome is enough is enough for God to do what God longs for and works at, change us into resurrection people. It is the story of our recreation. And incredibly, God says to us, get on the road with me in this work and story of recreation. It is God's and our story which in God's grace is left open-ended. It's the story that continues to seek and find new characters, new twists and turns, always with Jesus moving ahead of us, trusting us to follow him, to meet him in the Galilees of our world. It's an atrociously magnificent, dynamic, and wondrously incomprehensible story of life-making that tells us that nothing can remain the same anymore. Not religion, not faith, not relationships, not the world. So I say, if we have come here like the women did too at first, to pay our respects to Jesus, maybe get another chance to nail down our faith, so to say, on this biggest feast day in the church's calendar. Well, here's the message for us. He's not here. He's gone ahead. The hope is in our showing up. The hope is in our belief that we don't get to decide how the story ends. And thank God for that. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Let us affirm our faith in God, 
We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who believes in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join with all who praise the loving kindness of Almighty God this day in praying for all of God's people according to their needs. We give thanks for all who have come through the waters of baptism into the life of God's eternal kingdom. May we who strive to know and do God's will reveal the new life of God in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we give thanks for those who struggle for peace and justice in the world. May they act with prudence and vision to plant the signs of God's reign on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our for the unloved and the forgotten, the poor and the hungry, the sick and troubled, and all those in any need. In our parish, we pray for Arlene Leslie, Margaret Astiano, the Bonomi family, Maddie Scott, Debbie Torres, Susan Reeves, Marilyn and John Tinsley, Diane Kruger, Hilbert Morales, and Tyler Grimes. For friends and family members, Pamela, Kate, and Elizabeth, daughters of Joe Baldwin. Lois Garland, Baby Samuel Collins, Mauro Bonomi, Patrick Lawrence, Diane Lawson, Jim Montalvo and family, Kimmy Higa, Nancy Call, Mary Del Carlo, Ken Kent, Teresa Sung and family, Christopher Warnock, Maureen Raverty, Caitlin Shanley and family, the Yucca family, Kim Weiner, Amanda McLeod Weisler, Naomi Foster, Easter, Beth Freeman, Alan Hubble, Harry Johnson, and for whom else would you pray? Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for those in every generation, resist and denounce violence, May the death and resurrection of Christ empower us to relinquish our weapons and choose the pathways of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We, we give you thanks for those who have gone before us and who now rest from their labors, especially Joe Baldwin and those for whom we now pray. May we all gain a share in the fruits of Christ's victory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Eternal God, by your Holy Spirit, sustain us, your people, to be hope and strength to the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now, my friends, may the peace of the risen Lord be with you.
walk in love as Christ loved and gave himself for us. The Lord be with you. Walk in love as Christ loved and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, author of all being. Your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. You are unceasingly at work, bringing order from chaos and filling emptiness with life. Christ, raised from the dead, proclaims the dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us. Your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by him who burst from the tomb and opened the gate of life, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and with all the whole company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory. Praise and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all. For by the cross eternal life is ours, and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden the mystery dawned that he whom they had loved and lost is, no is with us now in every place forever making himself known in the breaking of bread, speaking peace to the fearful disciples, welcoming weary fishermen on the shore. He renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the spirit who sets the seal of freedom on your sons and daughters. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the death nights of Israel's release, the night in which slaves walked free, at supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sin may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Make one with him. We offer you these gifts that with them ourselves a single holy living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful God, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, we may be the body and blood of your Son, that we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, 
and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. And now, as a Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, The gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you all to come forward to receive Holy Communion, but if you would if we would like to come forward to the altar, even if you don't receive communion to receive a blessing, please come forward with your arms on your chest in this manner. I know that you're coming for a blessing.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your glory. We may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Hello, everybody, and happy Easter. Is it loud enough? Yep, good. Okay, my name's Sandy Wilborn. I'm on the vestry here at All Saints, and I want to welcome everybody, especially people who are not here every Sunday. Easter is a great day to be here and to help celebrate uh, the season with us, and hopefully you come back soon as well. Big thank you to the choir amazing stuff they were here to like at the easter vigil to 10 30 last night as well so uh justin coming down from san francisco to uh, provide the organ music uh altar guild look how pretty the church is today and um uh, we have a uh, brunch afterwards everybody is invited in the uh, parish hall in there and um i don't know Jean, what else am i missing anything it's all good Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Ann Lane, also on the vestry, but in charge of the book group, and we are meeting in two weeks. We are reading See No Stranger by Valerie Carr. It, it's really a great book, easily available at uh, libraries and bookstores. So please read the book and join us, or just plan to join us anyway. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also Bow your heads and ask for God's blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. Amen. God the Son, who is bursting from the grave, brought new hope and a new future for humankind, give you a joy as you live the Easter faith. God, the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.
join us for the Easter brunch, which is in the parish hall. If you're looking at the altar, it's on your left, the door at your left.